Hello, Silent Knight here, and I'm back. Now that college is out of the way, expect to see some more videos. I'm going to start it off with the finalizing load order video that I promised you guys. So this video is meant to follow my two other videos, 20 plus mods to make Skyrim great again, and 20 plus mods to make Fallout 4 great again. You may be wondering, well what is there to do other than sort your load order? Well there's a lot more to do actually. This will cover some tools that people use to finalize their mods before they start a playthrough. It won't cover downloading and installing them, however I will leave a link to them in the description. But it will cover using them and what order to use them in as well. Once you have all the tools downloaded and installed, it's time to create shortcuts to them in your mod manager. This allows for easier access to them later, and it also allows you to set command line parameters which we'll need when using one of the tools here. You may notice that my mod manager is Vortex, and don't worry if you're not using Vortex. Your mod manager will most likely support this feature as well. Now the very first step to finalizing your load order is to delete all the patch files that we're going to generate when we're finalizing our load order. This means that if you haven't finalized your load order properly yet, you won't need to worry about anything because you won't have any patch files there to delete. But if you're refinalizing your load order because you installed some more mods, then you're not going to want to skip this step because it gives you a clean start. Please also note that in between the tools we'll be using, you'll want to make sure that your load order has been sorted, either with auto sort, which is based on loot and is already included in Vortex that I use, or with loot itself if you use another mod manager. After doing that, we'll start up our first tool, and that's Zedit. Now this is a relatively new program, and you're going to see a lot more people using it in the days to come, because it offers a very powerful patching feature. I'm only using one mod that has provided Zedit patchers so far, and that mod's called Know Your Enemy. And the reason it uses Zedit patchers is because it edits so many things in the game world. Zedit patchers create patch files for your specific load order. This allows mod authors to, instead of include a ton of different patches for different mods, just include some Zedit patchers. Mods that include Zedit patchers will come with instructions on how to import their patchers into your Zedit. Once they're in, you just load Zedit, load your plugins, click the button at the top, and then click on the patch that you want to build. And after setting some settings for it off to the side here, you just go back to this page and press build. You can build multiple patches at once, but for the mod Know Your Enemy, the mod author has included specific instructions to not do that and instead run them one at a time. After it finishes, it should automatically enable the generated patch files in your load order, but you should probably just check to make sure. Also, like I mentioned at the beginning of this video, you'll want to sort your plugins between using this tool and the next one we're going to get to. And this next tool is the older and more widely used and well-known XEdit. The version of XEdit I'm using is called SSE Edit, which is the version for Skyrim Special Edition. But there are versions for different games as well, such as FO4 Edit, which is for Fallout 4, or TS5 Edit, which is the version for standard Skyrim. And we're not going to use it for the reason you might think, which is cleaning mods. No, a competent mod author cleans their mods before they release them, so you shouldn't have to worry about that. If a mod author doesn't clean their mod, it's normally either because they're incompetent, like I said before, or because it's not supposed to be cleaned, and you really shouldn't be cleaning mods that are not supposed to be cleaned. So the reason we're using Xedit is to run a script on all the plugins in our load order that fixes water types. In Skyrim Special Edition, Bethesda decided to revamp the water system. And what this did is it caused issues when porting old rim mods to Special Edition. Mod authors needed to change the old water type to the new water type for their mods that they're porting and not all of them did so. And so this just checks to make sure all of the mods in your load order have been converted properly. It's completely safe and it will save your game from those water seams that you might see every now and then, where you have one ugly water type up against the fresher brand new water type. This is the only script I use on my entire load order, but there are probably more out there that will help you in other ways too. 
So to start, let's open XEdit and load all our plugins. After that, you're going to use shift click and control click to highlight everything that's not an official plugin, the unofficial Skyrim Special Edition patch, or water mods. After that's done, you can right click any of the ones you have selected and then click apply script. This is how you'll apply this one and many others. You just highlight the one that you want and then press OK and it'll apply it to everything. This one generates a new plugin with the patch, so you're going to want to type a name for it here and then press OK first. And it'll show you everything that it's changing here in the output window. You're also going to get some pop-ups here and you're going to want to press yes on them. As you can see, my load order did have some issues with water types and the script has corrected them for me with the plugin it's generated. To save your newly generated plugin, you just hit the X to close out of XEdit and you make sure your plugin is checked there and you just hit OK and it'll save it. And for this, you also want to make sure that it is enabled in your mod manager and also be sure to sort your plugins again. Next up, we're going to create a bashed patch with Rye Bash. Bashed patches can do a lot of things, and I'll go over some of them here in a minute. But the main thing they do is create patches for leveled lists. Once you have it open, you'll just scroll to the bottom, right click on this bashed patch zero, and then click rebuild patch. The following window will tell you to deactivate some of your mods, but you can just ignore this if you're not going to merge any mods. Merging mods merges them into the bash patch, and therefore you don't need them activated anymore. And going along with that, I'm also going to uncheck the merge patches option here. Because I'm not close to hitting the 255 ESP limit, and I don't want to complicate things further. I'm just going to use it to merge leveled lists. When you have the options you want selected, you just hit the build patch button and you wait for it to finish. Some of the other options in Rye Bash might be useful like merging inventories, but I'm not going to cover that here. The main thing people use it for is again, the leveled lists. Leveled lists are the things edited by mod authors that can add their custom items to the game world seamlessly. And when two mods edit the same leveled list, one of them will overwrite the other. Once the patch is done, you're going to hit OK and then yes to activate the plugin. But again, you're also going to want to make sure it is enabled in your mod manager and you're going to want to sort your plugins again before the next step. And the next step is text gen, which is a part of Dindu Laud. A LOD is what you see outside of your view distance in game. It's basically a pre-made lower resolution, lower detail version of what you'll see when you get up close. The LODs do not update to reflect what mods you have installed, and that's where Dindu LOD comes in. Now you may be wondering, well, why can't I just turn off LODs altogether? And that's because the performance impact would be ridiculous. If you're coming to this video from my Fallout 4 video, then there's good news for you, you're actually done. Dindu Law does not work for Fallout 4 because Fallout 4 functions in a different way. From my understanding, a lot of what you see in the background in Fallout 4 is part of a pre-combine, which we talked about in that video, and the mod Boston FPS fix pretty much solves the issue there. And before we start generating a Dindu LOD, we're going to need the Dindu Lod resources from the Dindu Lod page that I've linked in the description. And you're also going to need some billboard files. You'll need some for the vanilla trees as well as any tree mods that you may have. So I've linked to the indistinguishable vanilla trees in the description. And if you have a tree mod that includes billboards, you'll want to enable those too. When installing these things that I just talked about, you'll want Dindu Lod resources to load first with the vanilla billboards overriding the Dindu Lod resources and any mod tree billboards overriding the vanilla tree billboards. Unfortunately, Vortex does not recognize billboards as necessary files and therefore it gives this message up at the top and you're going to want to ignore this. The last preparation step we'll need to do before generating a Dindu LOD is to add the hyphen SSE command line parameter to your Vortex shortcut for both Textgen and Dindu LOD x64. 
This just tells the programs that you're generating a LOD for Skyrim Special Edition. I almost forgot, there is one more mod you need before generating a Dindu LOD, and it's one that I mentioned in my 20 mods that make Skyrim great again video. And it's one that didn't really have any other mods that required it in the video, so I'm sorry about that. Um, that was actually for this video. That mod is Papyrus Utils SE. So yeah, just make sure you have that before starting this step. Without further ado, let's start generating our Dindu LOD. And the first step to do this is to generate the Dindu LOD text gen textures. You do this by loading up text gen, preferably the 64-bit version, choosing a location that you want to output the textures to. For me, I just have a folder for this inside of the Dindu LOD folder, which should be inside of your game directory if you installed it correctly. After that, you can change some settings if you like before pressing start. However, I just keep them default because it works really well for me. After you hit start, you're going to wait for a couple minutes and then it should come up with a message telling you when it's done. If you get any errors, make sure that you've run the program as administrator. That's actually not the last step to installing the textures that you've just generated because it doesn't do it for you. You're going to have to manually go into the output folder that you created, right click on the new textures folder, and compress it into a zip file or a 7-zip file. I'm using 7-zip, but if you want to send it to a regular zip file, all you have to do is go under the send to menu and right clicking and send it to a zip file. It doesn't matter what it's named, but I recommend naming it something like Dendu Lod Textures so you can find it later. Now we need to import this into our mod manager. So in Vortex, it's done by just dragging it like you see here. And then we're going to activate it in the mod manager. In Vortex, this means installing and enabling it. After we do that, we are going to get some file conflicts. The general rule with these is to overwrite every mod that does not include Lod texture files. And in my case, all of the mods that conflict include their own LOD textures. So we're going to load all of those mods after the Dindu LOD textures that we've just installed. It's easy to tell on Vortex which mods include their own LOD textures by just clicking on the highlighted conflicting files and checking to see if there are any textures that include the word LOD in the file path. After solving those conflicts, I'm just gonna hit the save button and then Vortex is going to deploy my mods again. And then that's it. The Dindulod textures from TextGen will have been installed. And now it's time to generate the actual LOD. And we do that by starting up Dindulod, again, preferably the 64-bit version. Once it loads up, you'll see a menu that looks very similar to the TextGen menu, but with a new box that shows all the cells that you can generate LODs for. You're just going to right click on it and then click select all. After that, you'll notice another place to select where the output files will go. And you want to create another folder for outputting the actual LODs separate from the TextGen output. So again, I just have mine in another separate folder inside the Dindu LOD folder that is in my game directory. Once you have a location selected for the output, you're just going to click one of the presets. I can run either medium or high depending on how much the rest of my mods stress my game out. I'm running a GTX 1070 on this computer, by the way. So when you choose a preset you want to try out, it'll automatically start generating the LOD. And so again, there's quite a bit of waiting to do and this one can take even longer than the last one. And remember, if it fails, try running it again as administrator. Once it's done, another box will come up and you'll just press save and exit. And then you're going to do the same thing you did with TextGen, but with the newly outputted Dindu LOD files. So you're going to go into that Dindu LOD output folder that you created, highlight everything in it, send it to a zip file, and then import it into your mod manager and install it. This time you will overwrite absolutely everything. Wait a second, there's one I actually forgot. That's because it's automated now. It's called Four's New Idol Skyrim, and it's for animation mods. Most animation mods require you to run this after installing them. Vortex has an option that will run it whenever needed, so you can look into that if you want. But all you have to do with it is open it and then click the Update Behaviors button. So it's super simple, no wonder I forgot to include it. It also doesn't really matter what step in the process you do this at. And that's all I have for you. 
Remember, this video isn't to show you how to install these programs. You should be able to figure that out on your own. You just follow the instructions on the page. And it's also not a video that you're meant to follow perfectly. For example, you might not use any mods that have Zedit patchers or Xedit scripts that you need to run. So you may not even need those two programs at all. Same thing with leveled lists and LODs. You may not use any mods that edit leveled lists or edit the game world in a way that it would affect LODs. This was just a guide to cover the usage of the various tools that people use to finalize their load order. If you want more in-depth tutorials on specific tools that I covered here, there are already tutorial videos here on YouTube that cover them more in depth, but I wanted to keep this video straight to the point. If you add mods to your game after finalizing your load order, you may want to restart the entire process. And this video can help you remember how to if it's been a while. I don't know about you, but I'll come back to Skyrim about once a year and then I have to relearn some things. So I made this video to serve as a reminder for me as well. Let me know if you'd like to see more Skyrim videos or Fallout 4 videos and have a good rest of your day. Peace.